All right, guys, so this is just kind of a quick summary of yesterday's lesson. I didn't get to record it during class, so I'm going to give you kind of an abbreviated version in case you were absent yesterday and missed the lesson. So actually, yesterday's lesson was kind of a review of stuff that we did back before Christmas. So <clears throat> should have been familiar material. So we talked before Christmas about three different types of angles, complementary, supplementary, and vertical. So complementary angles are going to be two angles that add up to 90 degrees. So their sum is going to be 90. And we talked a little bit about how complementary starts with a C, and so does the word corner. So you can think about how those angles form a corner or a 90 degree angle together. Okay, and then we have supplementary angles that are going to form a straight line together. So they add up to 180 degrees. So think S for supplementary and S for straight line. And then we have vertical angles that are across from each other. So our two number twos in this picture and our two number ones are going to be vertical angles because they are across from each other. And that means that they're always going to be congruent or equal. So then we talked about using those relationships to find missing information in a picture with angles. So like our first example problem that we did, we have two parallel lines. They're intersected by this line P. So we've got these three angles that are formed and we are asked to find the measure of angle Q. So that would be this angle right here. So we don't know anything about Q right now. All we know is that this angle above it is 2X plus 70 degrees and this angle is x minus 10 degrees. So we do know that x minus 10 and q are vertical to each other, so they're going to be congruent. So that means if we can figure out what this angle x minus 10 is, then we'll also know what q is. So then we kind of start looking to see what other relationships we see in the picture. So if I've got to figure out what x minus 10 is, that means I'm going to need to know what x is. So I look to see, okay, what other information about x has been given? Well, we know that this angle right here is 2x plus 70 degrees. And if we look at these two angles that have our x's in them, if we connect them, they're going to form this straight line. So they are supplementary to each other. And that means that they add up to 180 degrees. So to figure out what x is, I can combine those two expressions, 2x plus 70 and x minus 10, and add them up and set them equal to 180. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to set up like an equation so that I can figure out what that x is. Let me get a different font that's a little easier to read and make it a little smaller. Okay, so I have 2x plus 70. And I'm going to add that to our other angle, x minus 10, because I know when I add those two together, they should equal 180 since they're supplementary. So then I'm just going to go through and solve that equation to figure out what my x value is. So I'm going to combine some like terms. I've got 2x and 1x that can be combined to get 3x. And then 70 and negative 10, if I combine those, I'm going to get 60. So I have 3x plus 60 equals 180. And then I saw that two-step equation. So I need to subtract 60 from both sides to get rid of that constant. So then I'm just going to have my 3x. The 60s are going to cancel out. 180 minus 60 would give me 120. And then if 3x equals 120, that means x is going to equal 40. Because 120 divided by 3 gives me 40. Now, x is 40, and you'll notice that that's one of our answer choices, but we have to be careful because they did not ask us for the value of x. They asked us for the measure of angle q. So remember we said that if we know what x minus 10 is, then we'll know what angle q is since they're vertical. So since I know x is 40 and this angle up here is x minus 10, I can then substitute that 40 in for x and take 40 minus 10, which means this angle is 30 degrees. So if this angle is 30 degrees, that means angle Q is also 30 degrees. So that would be our final answer. So we used those supplementary angle relationships and vertical angle relationships to answer that question. All right, this next question is very similar. It says angle ABC and CBD are supplementary, so that means they add up to 180. All right, and ABC is represented by 3X plus 14. 
CBD is represented by 5x plus 6. So it wants us to find the measure of angle ABC. All right, so ABC is 3x plus 14, but they want us to find like the exact measure. Well, since we know that our two angles are supplementary, we're actually gonna work this one exactly like we set up the equation for the last one. 3x plus 14 and 5x plus 6, since they're supplementary, we can add them together. So 3x plus 14 plus 5x plus 6 and set them equal to 180 and then solve that equation. So we're gonna combine like terms. That would give us 8x plus 20 equals 180. Subtract 20 from both sides. So when I subtract 20, I'm gonna have 8x equals 160. And then when I divide by eight, x is gonna equal 20. But I do have to be careful because we're not looking for x, we're looking for angle ABC. So now that I know x is 20 and I know ABC is three x plus 14, I'm gonna substitute that 20 in for x. So instead of three x, I'm gonna have three times 20 plus 14 and that should give me 74 degrees. All right, so I'm actually not gonna work this next one for time's sake. After our angle problems, which by the way, I'm not working this problem in the video, but you can find the worked out solution in the filled out notes that are in Canvas. So you can always just click on that to see how we worked this problem out. All right, so then we moved into triangles. And of course we know from elementary school that triangles have three sides, three angles. And we talked about before Christmas how the angles add up to 180 degrees. So first we just used that fact that our angles in a triangle always add up to 180 to find our missing information in this picture. They want us to solve for X and they want us to solve for angle C. All right, so since we know that all three of these angles should add up to 180, we're actually gonna set up an equation that's very similar to the ones we just did for the angle problems. We're gonna add all of our angles together. So starting with three X plus four, and we're gonna add that 39 degree angle, and then we're gonna add 11 X plus 11. All of that added together should equal 180 because that's our three angles in the triangle. And then we're gonna solve that equation to figure out what X is. So I'm gonna combine my like terms. 3X plus 11X would give me 14X. And then our constants, four plus 39 is 43. 43 plus 11 would give me 54 equals 180. And then we're going to solve by subtracting that 54 on both sides, so 180 minus 54 would give me 126. So I have 14x equals 126. Divide by 14. So x is gonna equal nine. So we have answered our first question. Then we're gonna solve for angle C. So since we know x is nine, I'm gonna go to angle C and substitute that nine in for x. So 11 times nine plus 11. 11 times 9 is 99, plus 11 would give me 110 degrees. So angle C is 110 degrees. All right, so to figure out if three measurements form a triangle, we talked a little bit before Christmas about how our two smaller sides have to add up to something greater than the third side. So if you're talking about side lengths, you need to take the two shortest sides add them together and see if you get something greater than the third side. So if I have an object with sides five inches, 10 inches, and four inches, I would need to add five plus four, since those are my two shortest sides, and I wanna see if that's greater than 10. Well, five plus four is nine. Nine is not greater than 10, so these will not form a triangle. If I have an object with sides 12 feet, 6 feet, and 6 feet, I need to add my 6 feet and 6 feet together since those are my two shortest sides, and I want to see if they're greater than 12. Well, 6 plus 6 is 12, but 12 is not greater than 12, so these would also not form a triangle. Two shortest sides have to add up to something greater than the third side. All right, for the angles, you've gotta add all three up. So for angles, we're not just adding two of them, we're gonna add all three because we want that sum to be exactly 180 degrees. So if I add 30 plus 65 plus 85, 
30 plus 65 is 95. 95 plus 85 gives me 180. So this one would form a triangle because those add up to 180 degrees. If I have 45 degrees, 42 degrees, and 95 degrees, I'm going to add those. So 45 plus 42 plus 95 gives me 182 degrees. So it's really close, but it has to be exactly 180 to form a triangle. So that combination would not form a triangle. All right, guys, and what we did next in class is I gave your classmates a sheet of paper that had these different triangles on it, and they had to line up the triangles that had the same angle. So, like, you'll see that every one of these triangles has an angle with one arc, two arcs, and three arcs. So first I had them just lay all the angles with one arc on top of each other. And when we did that, all of the angles were able to match up perfectly. But of course the triangles didn't lay perfectly on top of each other because they're different sizes. We were able to do the same thing with all the angles that had two arcs on them. All the angles matched up, but the side lengths did not. So even though our angles in the triangles are all the same, the side lengths are different. So the angles do not make the triangles unique from each other. It's the side lengths that make them unique. So when you are asked about a unique triangle, that's always going to be dealing with side lengths. It's going to give you specific side measures to form a triangle. Angle measures are going to form more than one triangle. You can form all different sizes of triangles that have the same angle measure. So angle measures are not unique, side lengths are unique. So if it asks how many triangles exist with these angle measures, okay, well they're angles, so first we've got to see if they add up to 180 to see if a triangle even exists with them. So if I add 55 plus 45 plus 90, I get 190 degrees. So triangle has to add up to 180. So this one actually will not even form a triangle because they don't add up to 180 degrees. Then it asks how many triangles exist with the given side measures. Okay, so for side measures, I've got to add the two shortest sides. So I'm going to add 3 plus 5. And I'm going to see if that gives me something greater than 6. Well, 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 is greater than 6. So I know it will form a triangle. So I can cross out A because it's definitely going to form one. And if you're given those specific side lengths, we can only form one triangle that has one side of 3 inches, one side of 6 inches, and one side of 5 inches. Those are very specific measurements. So if you're given the side lengths and they form a triangle, it's going to be a unique triangle. Our next question asked which ones will result in a unique triangle. Okay guys, so when it asks you for a unique triangle, you are looking for side lengths. So you can automatically rule out your choices that have angle measures in them. You are looking for specific side lengths that are going to form a unique triangle. So once you've narrowed it down to your side lengths, then you just have to check to see if they form a triangle, if they satisfy that inequality. So you're going to add your two shortest sides together. In this case, it's 2 plus 7. And see if that gives you something greater than your longest side, 8. So 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 is greater than 8. So since it forms a triangle and we're dealing with side lengths, that's going to be a unique triangle. For D, I'm going to add 5 plus 6 and see if that's greater than 12. Well, 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 is not greater than 12. So D is not going to work because it doesn't form a triangle. And then for E, if I add 11 plus 15, that's going to give me 26, which is greater than 17. So it forms a triangle, and since we have those specific side lengths, it's going to be a unique triangle. Now, if you're asked kind of the opposite, which conditions will result in more than one triangle, you're going to be looking for angle measures on this one because we can form all sorts of different triangles with the same angle measurements. As long as they add up to 180 degrees, they're going to form more than one triangle. So for this question, we can eliminate D, E, and F because all of those deal with side lengths. Side lengths are going to form a specific unique triangle, not more than one triangle. 
So once you've narrowed it down to your angle measures, you just need to check and see if they add up to 180. So if I add 45 plus 45, that's 90. 90 plus 80 gives me 170. So since 170 is not equal to 180, A won't work because it doesn't even form a triangle. So that means hopefully B and C are going to be our two answers. So for B, if I add 50 plus 50 plus 80, that would give me 180 degrees. So B forms a triangle, and since it's just those angle measures, it's going to be more than one triangle that can be formed because we can make those sides all different lengths as long as we have those angle measures. And then C, if I add 30 plus 60, that gives me 90. 90 plus 90 gives me 180. So since it forms a triangle and we're dealing with angle measures, it's going to make more than one triangle. All right, so that kind of wraps up yesterday's lesson. If you have any questions after watching this video, just either email me or come see me before first block starts any morning to ask me questions.